Ah, oh, guys, I love what I do, and I just want to, first, let me give a shout-out to David Springer. I appreciate you all the way down in Tennessee giving us a call and speaking this into us, because you said a phrase, and it just lit me up, and I couldn't get it off my mind, so just thank you. I'm going to give you credit where credit is due. Um, you burst something in me through this, and I want to share what God shared with me as you spoke, um, and I hope it ignites some people. I hope it challenges us and allows us to um, raise that head up to be who God has called us to be because he has changed us through the blood of Christ. And I'm going to get a little bit more into detail with this in this scripture. It is beautiful, and I want you to um, fully see what we're talking about today. But before we do that, let us bow our heads, raise our hands, let us talk to this King of Kings who is willing to give everything for us. King Jesus, we thank you for your sovereignty, for your will to come into our lives, to not leave us destitute on our own, but came to give us a way back, to give us the most priceless gift in all of creation, your spilled blood, that we might have redemption through it, that we might find uh, forgiveness of sins, life everlasting, and a peace that passes all understanding because of what you were willing to spill that day on that cross. And the fact that you didn't stay in the grave, they put you in, but you rose victoriously and now sit at the power side of God the Father, we give you honor and reverence because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Let your spirit speak through these words today. Let it penetrate every heart and mind that it is, comes into contact with it, that is here present to listen to it, and let it bring us into action that we might dare rise up as sons and daughters of the Most High through you, through our faith in you, and honor you by the lives we live. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let me show you what we're talking about here today because it is phenomenal, right? And I'm going to bring you from the Old Testament to the New Testament into something that I know you can relate to modern day interpretations of this thing that we see played out in everyday life, right? And I want to share this with you that we might get a hold of it. And once we get a hold of it, never let it go. Never let it escape our thoughts and always keep it before us that we have um, been given something unlike anything else ever given. Just let me show you. Let me show you. Let's start out in 1 Samuel 16, right? And I love the story of David, but I want to concentrate on the very first part of David's life where he's introduced to us, right? We ain't got to get into the battle of Goliath. We ain't got to get into his kingship. We don't have to get into any of that because God does an amazing work right at the beginning that we just overlook far too often, right? We just skim through it like it's nothing. But it's everything. Let me show you. 1 Samuel 16. I'm going to start in verse 5. Samuel replied, Yes, I come in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Now, this was God sending Samuel out to anoint a new king. Saul fell out of favor with him, and he is coming to anoint a new king, right? Now, watch what happens. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So we asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So we sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Do you see this? Samuel rose and anointed David. Ah, there is so much in this right here. Samuel arose and anointed this shepherd boy. Don't you understand? He just came from the fields. He was tending the flock. Everyone knew it when he walked in. Why? Because he smelled like it. He had the aroma. His identity was founded in it. He was sleeping with the sheep. He had to watch them at night. He was their comfort, right? Day in and day out, and they rubbed off on him. And that is all he smelled like. Sheep and manure, that's it. 
and his smell was his identity. And when he walked in, God said, Arise and anoint him. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed my man David. Now, why is this important? Ha, I'm about to show you. Let me show you what this horn of oil was. Let me show you what just happened here because we miss it. Like, we just take it for granted. Like, ah, David got anointed. No, I need you to see how he got anointed, what changed in him. Watch, Exodus 30. I just want to show you this because y'all probably never even seen it before, what this anointing oil was because it was a very specific mixture of things. And this horn of oil that Samuel applied to David was this. Verse 22 in chapter 30. Then the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, and 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hen of olive oil. Now watch, watch. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. Like we're thinking, ah, it's just anointing oil. We have no idea what that means. But this is the perfume. It's scented. It's got the cinnamon. It's got the, um, the myrrh in it. It has the aroma of it. And when um, Samuel rose up to anoint David, like he ain't no shepherd boy no more. He put a new smell on him. He got that new scent of Dior. He got that set apart scent. See what I'm talking about? He came in a shepherd boy smelling like it, looking like it but he got the anointing of the oil and it gave him a whole new countenance, a whole new aroma, a whole new smell permeated from him because don't you know the strongest smell wins out? He came in one way, but he left the other way. It says this is sacred oil. You know what sacred means? Set apart. When David left the presence of Samuel, he left smelling set apart, sacred to God. Ah, I need you to see this because this is us. This is us in this story. We come smelling one way, but when we get washed in the blood, when the oil comes upon us, when this Holy Spirit gets in our heart, we leave a completely different way. There's a new fragrance like we've been with a God or something. We are sacred to him. We are set apart. We ain't who we used to be. The old is gone. The new has come, including the smell of it. Feel me? This is what happened to David. This is huge. It says he got anointed in the presence of all his brothers. His brothers knew he was just a shepherd boy. They ridiculed him for it. You tell him, daddy's sheep. But when they left, he couldn't be ridiculed no more. Why? He didn't even smell like the sheep no more. They weren't his sheep anyways. They were daddies. He was about to go tend his flock, right? And he stepped out on that battlefield, what? Smelling like a king. Like someone set apart. He walked as such now. Don't you understand? Shepherds were lowly. They stayed out in the fields. They didn't get close. No one don't want to get close to them. But when David rolled up on that field that day, new man, anointed with a new fragrance, that set apart thing. And that's what we get to have in our life. Don't you see what Jesus died to give? He gave us a way that we might be set apart. The old, mm -mm, it don't identify us no more. So when we walk in our door and our past catches up with us, that ain't who we are. We've been washed by the blood of Christ. That stank been removed. And we got a new, even fragrance to us, set apart is our fragrance now. Ah, I love it. I love it. This is what David got, and this is what we can have through the blood of Jesus. That's why he died, that we might be an aroma pleasing to our God, a sacrifice like incense coming before him that he um, desires and enjoys. Mm -hmm. Now let's delve into this just a little bit more. Set apart. Let me show you what this fragrance does. Like, let me show you what getting next to Jesus, having him put um, his oil, his spirit in us, around us, upon us, what it does for us, right? Because this is how we are to walk, knowing that we are set apart by this God of ours, by this Savior. Knowing it. Watch. Daniel 3. Let me show you. Daniel 3. Verse 24, and you all know this story. I know you've heard it, but I want you to see something in it, right? Daniel 3, verse 24, Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? You know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They wouldn't bow down and worship the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar built? 
And he was furious with them. And he threw them in the furnace, heated up seven times, right? And this is where he jumps up and goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wasn't there three in the fire? And they said, yes. Certainly, your majesty, there was. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of God. Ah, you see who's there in with the flames? Like, I need you to like, like, let that rest for a second. Just let, let's just let that breathe for a second. Do you see who's in the flames with him? With them boys who wouldn't succumb, whose identity wasn't tied to this king before them, but to their God above them. Let that just rest for a minute, because that's where ours should be tied to as well. Ain't no king, ain't no president, ain't no monarch, ain't no czar, ain't no higher authority except him. And because we have him, we walk a little bit different through the flame. Now look what happens because they were willing to walk different through the flame. God met them, and look what happens in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, Governors and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed the bodies, nor is the hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and watch this one, and there was no smell of fire on them. Like none. There was no smell of the fire on them. Are you kidding me? You ever been around a campfire? The whole night, the rest of the um, evening, you smell like nothing but smoke. You ever been in a bar with your lady? You go in smelling good. You got the cologne, the deodorant, the fresh washed clothes. You looking right for the night, right? And you go in the bar. But how you come out? As soon as you step out the door, nothing but smoke. Why? Strongest scent wins. And you covered in it. Your lady complaining about it the rest of the night. The pillow that she's sleeping on ends up smelling just like her hair does because it saturates every part of it. But they, next to that set apart fragrance of God, right? and he set them apart in the fire that even the smoke couldn't stick to them. You see where I'm going with this. You walking through sin now, but you walking with the Son of God, ah, it won't stick to you, not even the smell of it, because he has set you apart. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. When you get Jesus, you get a new countenance. The old, it's gone. It can't cling to you no more, not even the sin of it. So when you walk into a room, you better hold yourself a set apart because that is what you have been made. You ain't who you used to be. It ain't sticking to you no more. He has made you a new creation. And you are a son of the Most High or Lady Daughter. You? Through the blood of Jesus. And the smoke from the fire that you're walking through ain't even going to stick to you. It can't. There's a stronger one there. It overrides that smell. It's Jesus. It's the anointing. It's the sacred. It sets you apart. It's his spirit inside that nothing else can reside because he now has ownership of the home. Ah, see what I'm talking about? Like I'm being for real. Okay, let me, another example. You know, you all been there, you go to a Mexican joint. Let's say even after church, you go and get lunch after church, right? And you go to a Mexican joint and they got them sizzling fajitas at every table, right? And they smell so good. And you having a good time eating the guacamole dip and the queso. Loving life. I love me some Mexican food. Don't get it twisted. It's amazing. But when you walk out, you know that you've been there. Like you know your clothes smell like it. Your hair smells like it. You get in your car with your leftovers, you forget them in the back seat. Next time you get in, you're like, whoa, the restaurant came home with me. It smells like it. It permeates everything, right? Now I'm asking you, have you been so close to Jesus that that happens to you? And when you go somewhere, they're like, ah, he's been with Jesus. Ah, she must have woke up like next to him like she was. Because it's on you that much. Because his sacredness is there so much because his anointing is flowing through you. And they see it in love and they experience it and they have something new. They caught a whiff of something different. Something sacred. That even when you leave and depart the place that you're in, it's left there like leftovers in the back seat. Next time someone goes in, they're like, whoa, God's been here. You been there? You know what I'm talking about? Have you been so in contact with Christ that that's what you leave, the residue behind? That wherever you go, he goes because he's permeated every 
measure of you. Every part of you set you apart, sacred and holy. And don't you understand you, the righteousness of the Most High? Like, this is how it's supposed to be. This is how we represent him. It's just in deeds. It's in demeanor. It's in action. It's in um, our presence. That's how we represent him in every way, in every sense. And I'm trying to show you that you could be so close to God that when you walk amongst this world, they can know it. Mm. Mm. Let me show you. Let me show you, because we're setting it up right here. But this ain't the fullness of it. We're setting it up. Let me show you what it means to get next to Jesus, to have him change everything by simply getting before him. I ain't talking about running around doing everything for him like, like, like a little Martha. I'm talking about getting before him like a Mary, right? And getting saturated in his presence with the sacred with the anointing, with the set-apart fragrance, so that what you came in like ain't how you leave. Let me show you. Go to Luke 36. I love this. I'm talking, you got some hope right coming. Like, this is what this is. This is hope. That as we come in, we ain't got to leave like it. We can leave that there. We can be changed in an instant. That's what Jesus came to do. That's why he spilled his blood that we might come under it, be washed clean, whiter than snow, and be changed. Verse 36 in chapter 7. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, as she is a sinner. Oh, watch this. Jesus answered them, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and another 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? You know, the one that you ridiculed him. The one that you like, if, if you really know who this woman was, he wouldn't let her touch him. Watch. Do you see this woman? I have came into your house, my man, not hers, your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But for whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this that forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Ha! <laughs> Let me show you what just happened. This woman walks into the house smelling like a whore. Let's not play no punches with it. This is what she was. And that's what she came smelling like. And everyone knew it in town, right? And she comes and she's repentful of him. Like, that's where we got to get to with Jesus. Own who you are. You lost in them sins. You smelling like something. It may not be what she's smelling like, but that sin, sin got a stench on you. I promise you. And God don't like it. He can't stand it. That's why he sent Jesus. And this woman comes smelling like she's smelling, comes sorrowful before God. She knows he's the Savior and can forgive everything. And she's weeping. And it hits his feet with the tears. And she gets down and she rubs the tears, washes the feet with her hair, pours the perfume on. Both him and her get that. Don't you see? Jesus is smelling like beautiful fragrance here. But so is she. You see what I'm talking about? So is she. In an instant, her whole identity changed because she got to the feet of Jesus. 
because she was so close to him, so next to him, because she loved him so much, because she was forgiven much. Yes, she was a sinner. I understand that. So are you. So was I. But if we come to the feet of Jesus, we can get what he's got. We can get so close to him that he covers us anew. Our sins are forgiven. How I walked in smelling. She walked in smelling like a whore. She walked out smelling like a savior. Look at this. This is the joy that we have in Christ. We may walk in smelling like a drunkard, like a, um, like a sinner, like a liar, like, a, like anything that falls under the category. But that ain't how we got to stay. Not if we don't stay reclining at the table. If we come to the feet, if we get in his presence, if he gives us his anointing and sets us apart because of our faith in him, we walk out smelling new. He says, go. You won't stay here anymore. Go. Go. Your sins are forgiven. You don't even smell like you smelled when you came in here. The aroma's changed. The atmosphere is completely different. Now you represent me. You smell just like me. And everywhere you go in this town, there's a new identity coming. Why? Because you are now um, correlated with me. But you see, her and Jesus were the only one that smelled like this. That is her privilege. And everywhere the gospel is preached, she is talked about. She is told about. For how many thousands of years is she found in these Gospels? Why? Because she came to the feet, because she's so permeated with Jesus that he flowed through her, that he um, covered her. He was the strongest in the room. So when she came into that house, she didn't leave smelling like Mexican food. I don't know what was on the table, but she don't leave like the dinner smell. She leave like her Savior smell. And that's what I'm trying to convey to us. That's how we can walk. We ain't got to be like no one else. We can come to the feet of Jesus, find forgiveness, and rise, rise up and walk anew. To where our very identity is changed. Listen to me, I'm being practical here. You used to be a drunkard, and everyone knew where they smelled you before they saw you. Everybody knows you just came from the bar. They didn't even have to ask you because your identity was out there for everyone. You can be changed in an instant. You ain't got to stay in that bottle. You can be changed. All you got to do is come to the feet of Jesus. I'm just being real with you. And in an instant, everyone's going to go, whoa, what just happened? Because our Savior is still saving. He's still freeing those held in bondage by drink or drug, by lust or pride. He's still freeing them and giving them a new identity, that when they walk in the next time, they're like, whoa, something's changed. You ain't the same man that walked in yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd that happen? Jesus, I met him. I fell at his feet. And he shared himself with me. I got washed in the blood. I'm a clean man. You know what I'm talking about? I'm a clean man. Parents, you got children? They get stank at home? It's time to take a bath. Same is true with us. God's like, child, you stink. Here's the soap. It's the only remedy. It's the blood of my son. He's the only one that can take off the stench of sin that is upon you, that you've been wallowing in, that you've been living in. You walk in smelling nasty, son. Time to get cleaned up so you can walk out smelling good, representing me well. Because you're my child. I ain't going to have you walk around acting, looking, smelling like that. You ain't no scrub. You a son. Raise up to that standard. See what I'm talking about? This is what God does for us. That we can have it. This is that anointing, that set apart smell, that fragrance that we are supposed to walk in, live in, and breathe in. Because it's not just for other people to know. No, 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 forget them. They may never know. But don't you think that woman, every time she raised up, every time she walked out, every time she smelled her hair from then on out, you know the ones that were scrubbing Jesus' feet, covered in perfume? She smelled that, what she identifying with her Savior now. And every time, every time that that blood comes to us, that we remember what Jesus has done, that he has died for us, we know who we are in him because he is our Savior and I am redeemed by him. It's a testimony to the identity he has now given to us. Mm. Put yourself in her place. Ain't nobody want to stay Nobody wants to stay in that, that other place. They want
even if they don't know no better, on it, their father does. And he does not want them to stay in filth when he has created them for so much more, to live clean, peaceful, joyful, restful, in the love and light of his countenance. And that's how you do it. You get his blood and he cleanses you and you've got a whole new fragrance. Now watch, like, I ain't even saying that when you get clean by the blood of Christ, everything's going to be roses and butterflies. It ain't. But what I'm trying to do is encourage you that when you get this, ain't nothing else can stick to you. Like, I'm just being real. You're going to go through some fights. You're going to go through some hell, some fire, some trials. But it ain't going to hurt you. Look what I'm talking about. Isaiah 43. I'm going to leave you with this just so you know what we're doing. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. Raise that head up, son. You a new creation. For I have redeemed you. I have washed you whiter than snow. That stank you have, mm -mm, it ain't there no more. You a new creation. I have redeemed you. Look, I have summoned you by name. I know you personally. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, oh, you might have some hard time, but when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I'm going to stand next to you. You're going to smell just like me. That's your identity. I'm your identity. Watch. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. More than that, like she Jack, Mishak, and Abednego, you will not even have the stench of smoke on you. Why? Because I'm the one that you represent. I'm the one that represents you. And you have my identity, not the smokes. So I don't care if you slip and fall back into sin for a second, like you just have one of them mess ups, it ain't sticking to you because Jesus is. Bounce back up. Get back up. You ain't staying down in it. You ain't meant to be a victim. You're a victor, son. Your identity is different. You ain't a shepherd boy smelling like sheep. You a king by the blood of Jesus. Walk like it. Rise back up. Don't you stay down there in that filth. You ain't meant to live there. Get back up. Turn back right. And walk with your Christ once more. Watch. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Because you walk with me. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. He's talking about Israel, but we grafted in through faith in Jesus to the nation of Israel. This is our promises. You ain't got to worry what you're walking through. It ain't going to define you. It's not going to identify you. You've got a Savior that does that. His name is Jesus, and he hung to spill blood that might wash you clean, anointed you with oil like the Holy Spirit coming into your heart, and the fragrance is new. You ain't who you used to be. Don't you go acting like it, believing it no more. You are a new creation. That is your identity. Walk forth as such and go like the woman of the night that came into Jesus and anointed his feet with oil. Rise. Accept your forgiveness that Jesus has given and walk out anew, smelling sweeter than ever because of what Jesus did for you. I just want to encourage you. When it gets hard, know that your Christ has got you covered. Ain't nothing coming through that. Nothing. Because he sets the tone, he sets the identity, he sets um, the aroma of your life. And knowing that, when you get him, when you catch glimpses of him, honor him, acknowledge him, and let him continue to set that identity every day of your life, that you might rise anew every day you arise. And if you don't have him, if you still are identified and defined by the filth that you're living in, and you want out, my man is closer than you can ever imagine. All you've got to do is be like this woman that we talked about. Come to the feet of Jesus in the penitent form. Hit the knees and be sorry for it. Let them tears be shed. And then believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And let him anoint you with oil, that perfume, that fragrance, that you might rise up a new creation, not defined or identified by the stench of your sin, but um, to rise up anew 
by the sacredness of your king set apart is your new fragrance. Let him give that to you. It's what he died that you might take. All you got to do is be willing to, and it's on you. He is right next to you. He is closer than a brother. All you've got to do is ask for him, and he will cover you and wash you whiter than snow and make you appealing and pleasing to, your, to his father. I pray in Jesus' name you do, and I pray that you walk out anew, and the next time you walk in a room, people are like, whoa, who is this new man coming? What happened to you, my man? And you get to testify to Jesus, to what he's done for you, that you don't have to walk in, and people think like, uh, like they did this woman. You know what I'm saying? He's got so much for you. He's got a life for you to live and life to the full. Don't spend your time wallowing in the pit. It ain't where you were born to live. You were born to rise and ascend with him to the heights of this life that he is willing to share with you. Dare to follow. Now let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And in Jesus' name, may you take it. Amen. Ah, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly pray it blessed you. And if it did, subscribe to this channel that you might continue to get the latest revelations from God that they might encourage and embolden you to walk boldly and faithfully with your Savior. God bless.